Good evening. It's Saturday, the 18th of June, 2022. I'm bringing you this tutorial on V4 Gamma, not as a member of the development team and not for any other company I work for. This is just a uh, independent tutorial from me because uh, you are such treasured colleagues. Uh, I would love to help you grow your knowledge about how to use this tool. I assume that already you know the basics of V4 Gamma in terms of how to put together some basic logic, uh, some operations and methods, and we see something like that in front of us. This little piece of code draws three stars. We can see them there. The stars have different properties, position, radius, spike count, like five properties per um, thing. Uh, in this case, the second and the third star are actually the same, except for only the position is different between those two stars. What's important about that is that we are now looking for a solution that would allow us to streamline this and make the whole thing neater. And this is where records come in. Okay, so let's look at recreating this using some records. So the main application, at least when you're starting out, of using a record is to create your own data type. And that's what we're going to do today. So in this case, we've got these properties and we want to create something that encapsulates these properties. In the end, it's a star with color, so we're gonna call it color star. To create that, double click anywhere to bring up the node browser, type record to create a new record. Uh, in this case, what you've created is the definition of the record. Probably you already know about this. Um, the definition is not the same as the operating node. Uh, and we're gonna call this one color star. Uh, just single, not color stars. We'll get to that a bit later. Okay. So color star wants to have these same properties that we already have. So I'm just going to copy those for reference, go into color star, and then I want to create five pads. Pad is just where we put properties and I'm going to give them the same names. and color spelled with the American Microsoft spelling. Okay, uh, we then want to give these types. You middle click on a pad, as you might know, to set a type annotation. In this case, that first one is vector two, the radius, uh, the radii are both floats, float 32, the spike count is an integer 32, and the color is a type called RGBA. Okay. So then I'm not going to plug those into it. What I'm going to do basically, so now it has the pads, it has the properties, but how do we access those properties with two, what's called operations. Operation is a term you hear a lot in gamma. In this case, operation means essentially versions of this record node that can be used in other places. You'll see what that means in a minute. So if I create an input here and I'm going to call it position, I'm going to connect it to the position tab. You see it turned white. So when I open this menu here, there's these operations create. That might not look like it, but that's already the white operation is always called create. I'm also going to create an output also called position. And if I connect that, it's also put it on the create operation, which we don't want to do. Ah, you can see it's written there as well in the tooltip. In this case, what we want is an operation called split. In order to do that, I'm going to go over here to operations, hit plus, type split. And then over here, I'm going to click on the output pin, assign split. Okay, so now we have position uh, with a create and split operation. This is such a normal process for creating your own data types that there's actually a shortcut for it. If I select these pads, I'm going to press control K and it actually goes and does the same thing already. Uh, so here is the base um, record called color star with its pads and operation of create and split. If I now go into the node browser back here and type color star, oops, color star, not color stars, that's for later in the tutorial. Color star has two operations that are listed here, create and split, and they are what we did. So here's create that takes the five inputs, position, radius, radius, spike count, color, and outputs one color star. In order to make this work with the drawing, I need this little fill node again that's used in scared color things. Uh, and then I'm going to 
have it color star split node and we're going to connect that position radius one radius two spike count and color onto here if we now change these controls it should uh, but it's not um drawing ah it's because it doesn't exist we need to give it some spikes and things ah there it is okay and we'll make it blue ish when you're changing these rgba values you probably already know but if you hold shift that changes the alpha so it's transparent which will allow us to see some things a bit more easily okay move the position over here and there's the blue one i want to do the same thing so actually let's delete those and copy paste here we just have this one structure that we can copy and paste very easily then we put another create color star here and this one will be the second one which uh, is meant to be sort of green a bit smaller less spikes and yeah let's make it green now if we plug this straight into here you can start to see the power of this then automatically it's going to render the same color star data in there, which is great. However, we want a separate position. So this is where records get a little more interesting. If we go back into the record, create an input, we call this input also position. We want to create a new operation called set position that only writes into this property and it'll overwrite previous things. In fact, it won't let me do two creates, so I've got to assign that. Set position, position. Okay, so on create, position is written in the pad, but also if you call set position, that's written into the pad. So now, again, I come here, color star, color star, set position. If I put the output from the color star that's created up here, put in there, then this should edit the position of just the third star only. You might say that's only a little neater than what we have up here. But once we're starting talking many, many color stars and there's only like one uh, link to connect them, and also bear in mind you could hide this mess inside one node as well, uh, then things definitely get a lot more, a uh, lot neater. And if your application's main job is to make color stars, it's now easier to uh, reason about how this application is working instead of an array of kind of five abstract things. Now it's color stars and you can tell the system to draw three color stars or five or something which we'll get to now. Okay, so in this case, we've created three color star instances. Well, actually we created two and then we modified one of them and copied it uh, to be the third one here. Let's use a spread to do this. In the end, we want to have the same three instances. Put them over here. And we're going to use spread add. All that does, it's very simple, is um, add things to a spread. And if there's no spread on the input side, that's fine. V4's default uh, functionality will create an empty spread. of. It says it can only be typed color star now, so that contains an empty spread of color star. And now there's one there, and you can guess how this is going to work. Put two there, three there, uh, which is our modified one. And that is now outputting a spread of color star. Now, if I click that, you'll notice I can't drop this. Uh, oh no, I would need a color star split operation anyway. Oops. Color star split. You'll notice this type spread color star does not match this type color star. This is the difference between an instance and a spread. Uh, this only wants one. For this application in drawing, we need a for each loop. For each loops are great, they'll go through everything in a spread for this kind of thing and they'll draw it, which is great. So we use the uh, top input there, connect that to color star, connect position, radius one, radius two, spike count. Oops, don't do that wrong. Uh, I think we'll need fill here and then this connects. Then we come out here. You'll see we actually have three path layers there. You see there's the three of them, but they're not combined into one. We need a special node for that called group spectral, which I will connect here. Group is a skier, 
um, function and the spectral one operates on a spread. Uh, if we connect that, then we should have, yeah, the same data we have here. Note though, these have their own instances, so I could change that and it's not changed up here. Uh, that's the basics of using a spread of records. The advantage of this is now I could actually create an input pin here. So this was node was part of a larger patch and this node, this what we're working on now is just the drawing part. Other logic interaction logic or something is gonna move the color stars around. I can put an input called color stars, connect that. And then when this patch is in its outer context, that input would be a node and I can move this spread of color stars around on just one pin. Okay, the last thing I wanna tell you about records is that um, this structure we've used so far where we're creating the movie frame and the creators on the update method means it'll actually run create every single frame. That's fine, it's not a big overhead to just collect some data, but often the way you wanna manipulate things in an application is actually to basically to save things. So we can create a pad this one time called color stars and that we can connect and then the entire thing goes into color stars. Uh, we can also in this patch, just like in the internal patches, assign these to a different operation. If we assign these on the create operation, which pretty much always exists, then uh, they'll only be done once. And we put color stars in here, we should get the same thing. Uh, just note that if I modify something here, nothing live happens because that create operation only ran once. I have to restart with F9. Oops, I pressed F8, F9. Okay, and you see that green star moved across. Um, there's more to this in terms of managing pads all with uh, records and classes, and I'll cover that all later. Thanks for your time and good patching.